Um, we just finished the Maimer Basi Lagani Tafshin Yud from 1958. And now we're going to start a Maimer also with the same title, Basi Lagani, but from 1978. Now, the, generally, the Basi Lagani Mamorim <coughs> were related to Yud Shvat, the Tent of Shvat, which we just observed this past Friday, the Tent of Shvat being the anniversary of the passing of the previous Rebbe and the day the Rebbe assumed leadership of the Chabad movement. And every chapters, and the following year, the, um, it's not working. I think just don't even bother with it. The following year, the Rebbe, um, on the anniversary of, the first anniversary of his father-in-law's passing, the Rebbe um, said his first Hasidic discourse, his first mimer with the title Basi Lagani. And then every single year on this anniversary, the Rebbe would um, recite a discourse on the, with this title, with the opening words of Basi Lagani, a, a, a quote obviously from Song of Songs, the verse Basi Lagani, Achesi Kala, I've come to my garden, my sister, my bride. And every year the Rebbe's discourse would focus on another one of the 20 chapters of the previous Rebbe series. So we learned a mimer the Rebbe said in 1958, which, which focused on, the, on chapter 8 of the Friedrich Rebbe's discourse. Now 1978, the Rebbe went, um, uh, the Rebbe quoted again on Yud Shvat, uh, deliver a Maimer Basi Lugani and also focused on chapter 8. And then afterwards, on 15 Shvat, on Tuba Shvat, the Rebbe said another Maimer Basi Lugani, which was unusual that there was a Basi Lugani not on Yud Shvat or on Yud or Yud Aleph or whatever, not in those, in those days, but on Tuba Shvat. And so the Rebbe begins it quoting also a, a, one idea from the previous Rebbe's Maimer. And then the Rebbe goes off on really another topic. Um, the, the, this topic is more related to Parshas Yisrael, which is the Parsha in which the Mimer was said. Um, and so we're, it's going to talk about a different topic. It's not really part of the Basi Lagani series of Mamarim. It's really its own Mimer. Now, the reason we chose to learn this Mimer today is because it's from 1978. We've been learning a lot of Mamarim from 1978. It's the 40th anniversary from when these Mamarim were said. So that's significant. But also, this Mimer that the Rebbe said in 1978 was edited by the Rebbe and prepared for publication on the occasion of the first yard site of his wife, of the Rebbe Tzin, Rebbe Tzin Chai Moshka, in 1989. So the Rebbe Tzin passed away on the 22nd of Shvat, Chav Be Shvat, 1988, and the following year on the first yard site, on the first yard site, so the Rebbe um, published, uh, edited and published this mimer to be studied on that yard site. Now, of course, this year, um, next week will be the 30th yard site of the Rebetzin. So in honor of the 30th yard site, we're going to learn the first mimer that was uh, uh, released for, uh, to be studied on her yard site. That's this mimer. Okay, so we have like the 40th anniversary from when it was said. We have the 30th anniversary from when it was edited and published for, for, for uh, study. And so we're going to learn this mimer now. It's in our booklets that we've been using, the Basilagani booklets for this year, on page Nun Ches. Or you can find it online. So it's Basi Lagani, or it's in the bagel bag. Basi Lagani from uh, Monday, Parsha Sisrei, Tu Bishvat Tafshin Lamet Ches. Okay. Basi Lagani, Achesi Kala, I come to my garden, my sister, my bride. Umevi, Kvet Kedrus, Mary Vichami Admor, Baal Hailul of the Yudshvat. And the Freya, the Kerebbe, the previous Rebbe, brings in his mimer. Um, who he is the, and he is the one whose yard site is observed on Yud Shvat. So why is it that now on Tu Shvat we're going to learn a mimer, a quote from a mimer that he, he released in honor of his passing or in preparation for his passing, which is Yud Shvat, if this, this were not on Yud Shvat. So the Rebbe explains, Shashle must call you Me'achedesh, he be Yemat Ezvav, because the, the, <coughs> the completion of the month is on the, mi- in the middle of the month, on the 15th day, which is Shabbat Kaima Sierra B'Shel Musa, which is when the moon is full. We know that the Jews are compared to the moon, uh, and Jews also we count following the lunar cycle. That's how we determine our months. And so the, the new month begins with the new moon, and the middle of the month is when the moon is full. So the full moon means it's the middle of the month. So the Tesvav, the 15th day of the month, the middle of the month is Kaim Asir so the moon is full, and that represents the fullness, a completion of, um, of one's divine service, and that's the, uh, so it represents a fullness, a completion. And so therefore, since Yud Shvat comes before the 15th of Shvat, a few days before, the completion of Yud Shvat in that sense, so the fullness of it is experienced on Tu B'Shvat, on the 15th of the month. So the Rebbe is quoting from the Maimer of the Friedrich Rebbe. So, he, he, so the Friedrich Rebbe brings in his Maimer, in his famous Maimer, by this title, it's a famous Maimer, as the Rebbe says in note 3, Shenitin al Yidei Baal HaMaimer, Yud Shvat Hei Tav Shin Yud Yaim Histal Kusoy. This is a Maimer that the previous Rebbe published. 
and prepared to be studied on Yud Shvat, 1950, which is the day of his passing. So he brings the Isa ben Medrash. So the free the government brings in his mimer that we find in the Medrash. Medrash says, the Pirish Basi Lagani, what is the meaning of Basi Lagani? I've come to my garden, who am Shachas Viridas, Iker Shechina Lamata Ba'aretz. When, when the verse says, in Song of Songs, I've come to my garden, what does it mean, God saying that I've come to my garden? It means that, I, that God's presence is revealed in this world. That's what it means. That's what the Medrash says. So the Medrash talks about there uh, the fact that when God creates the world, he's revealed, he's present, he's felt, his presence is felt in this world. And then through seven generations of sin, the divine presence retreats, as it were, from this world, meaning it becomes less perceptible, less apparent in this world, until it retreats finally to the, to the uh, first heaven. And then seven generations of tzaddikim, of the righteous, doing, uh, serving God, bring the Shekhinah, bring the Divine Presence lower until Moshe, who's the seventh, and he brings it down into this world. And so, Basi Lagani, I've come to my garden. It's my garden, it's the place that I had originally been. God says, when I created the world, I was originally there. That's why it's my garden. And Basi, I've come to my garden. That's when the Divine Presence is again manifest, revealed in this world. When was this, when did this happen? When is it that Basi Lagani, when does God say, I've come to my garden? When is the divine presence manifest in this world? So that was v'ikram shachazu ha'isakishukam mishkan. This was when the mishkan, the tabernacle in the desert, the 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 the, the um, portable sanctuary that was constructed in the desert was was erected. Like the Medrash says there in Shira Shirim that ve'emas shars hashchina aleha ba'aretz. When was it that the divine presence rested on down here on this on this war, on this earth? Is biyayim shukam mishkan on the day that the mishkan was. Uh, was was built. And like the verse says, make for me a sanctuary. At the whole point, God says, why, why is God asking us to build him a sanctuary? So I can dwell in it. So when God builds that sanctuary, that's when he dwells in a sanctuary, in, this, in a physical edifice, in the physical world. That's when he's revealed in this world. So that's the medrash that we always quote in Basi Lagani. It's always, you know, it's interesting. Most most mamarim, not all of them, but the, of the vast majority of mamarim. When the Rebbe starts the mimer of Basi Lagani, the Yutshvat mamarim, so he says, "Ve'isa b'medrash Rabba b'mkaymai." He quotes the medrash Rabba on the verse, on the verse of Song of Songs, because this idea that the Shechina was in this world and then it retreated and then it came back in the seven generations of sin and the seven generations of Sadiqim, This medrash appears in a few places. It appears in Bereshis, appears in Vayikra, appears um, it appears here. I think in Vayikra, it appears in, um, certainly in Bamidbar. Um, anyway, the, 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 the point is that Rebbe would always quote Medrash Rabbah on this verse. Um, so some would say that the reason is because it's, it's attributed to different sages, this teaching. But in Medrash Rabbah and Sher Shirim, this teaching was taught by Rebbe Menachem Chasne, the Rebbe Lazar ben Avuna. So this idea of Rebbe Menachem, Rebbe Menachem Chasne, the Rebbe's first name, and the son-in-law of the previous Rebbe, so that's like a, sort of a reference. That's what the Chassidim would say. But, um, but the idea is that, that this, this teaching here in Medrash Rabbah on, on Shir Hashirim and also in, in Bereshis and other places, when he explains that the Shechina comes into this world, when was it that the Shechina came to this world? It says that's when the Mishkan was built. However, we're going to see in a moment that there's a Medrash elsewhere, Medrash in Bamidbar in Parshas Nasei, where the Medrash says that when did the Shechina come to this world? By Mount Taira at Mount Sinai, before the, before the Mishkan was built. So, so, the Rebbe, so, so it seems like a contradiction. When was it that the Shechina came to this world? Was it when the Mishkan was built, or was it by Mount Taira? So the Rebbe is addressing that now. So, and even though we know that the Shechina came down, the divine presence was revealed in this world during uh, the experience at Mount Sinai. How do we know this? So the Medrash says, because like the verse says, that God descended onto Mount Sinai. So if Hashem came down onto Har Sinai, Har Sinai is in this world. So if Hashem was revealed in this world, so that was by Mount Taira. So the Rebbe says, you can say, that when we say that the Shechina comes into this world, when is the main uh, um, descent of the Shechina into this world? When can you say that the Shechina was revealed in this world? That's primarily when it comes down in an in, in internal fashion, the Pneumius. Meaning, what does it mean that it comes down the Pneumius? in an internal sort of fashion, that it's when it's done in a manner that the, that the, the lowly uh, world is refined and elevated through that experience. Meaning that, that there's, 
God comes down into this world by Mount Sinai. The thing is that Mount Sinai, we're going to see soon, by Har Sinai, God takes the initiative and he comes down and he's revealed in this world. No, this, the, the, the physical world, the Jewish people that, that, that came to Mount Sinai hadn't prepared to receive this revelation of godliness. It came down from above on God's initiative. God takes us out of Egypt to bring us to Mount Sinai and there he reveals himself to us. We didn't do anything to warrant that revelation. We didn't do anything to deserve to bring about that revelation. It came totally from above on God's initiative. So when that happens, when it comes from above without being initiated from down here, the result is that it doesn't affect, uh, it doesn't affect the physical world. It doesn't affect the person in an internal manner. It's not a transformative experience. It, it might be a little, trans, but it's, it, it's more external. And therefore, it's only temporary. And that's why we find that that Mount Sinai, after God gives the Torah, it says, when, when, before, before the revelation at Sinai, God says to Moshe to instruct the people not to, not to ascend the mountain, not to climb onto the mountain. Only Moshe could go onto the mountain, Aaron and the, the, the Skadim could go up to a certain point, but the people had to stand away from the mountain. They couldn't go onto the mountain because the mountain, that's where God was going to, God was going to be revealed on the mountain. It was a holy place. But what happens after Mount Sinai, after after Har Sinai, after uh, Mount Torah, after the giving of the Torah, Mount Sinai? Then the mountain becomes a mountain like all other mountains today. You go on every. There's no restriction on going onto any mountain in the Sinai Desert today. You go on every one of them, even the one where God was revealed. Why? Because the mountain didn't retain that holiness. It was only temporary. While God was revealed on the mountain, it was holy. You couldn't you couldn't go on it. But because it was something that came from above, it wasn't something that was earned or, or, or reached through the Veda of the Mata, through the, 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 the physical world being elevated. So therefore the experience wasn't a transformative one. It wasn't, an, it wasn't a premise, it wasn't an internalized one. And so therefore it was temporary, it was fleeting. Now the thing is that, um, that, that really by Mount Torah as well, so it says that um, it says that by Mount Torah there was a great sound, a great voice. Kol God of Allah Yasaf. There's a great uh, a sound, a great voice that didn't end. So the Medrash says, what's the mean that there was Allah Yasaf? It means that there was a few few interpretations. One of them is that there was no echo. That there's this imagine, there's a booming. Well, imagine in the desert, in the middle of the desert, in the wilderness, there's a booming, loud voice. What will have? You'll have an echo. You'll hear an echo. It'll bounce. What, what's an echo? An echo is when things bounce, when the sound bounces off the, 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 the mountains, the valleys. <clears throat> but by Mount Sinai, even though there was a great, loud, booming voice, but there was no echo. Why was there no echo? That's what it means. V'lo Yosef, it didn't bounce back. There was no echo. Why not? So it's explained because the physical world absorbed, absorbed the sound of God's voice. God speaking, saying, I am God, your God. And that... And the world, it didn't bounce off. Just as you know, the voice doesn't, doesn't penetrate something, so it bounces off the wall. When it bounces off the wall, it means that the wall is not receptive to the sound. Can't receive the sound. But by Mount Sinai, when God says, I am God, your God, that entered into everything. The entire world was receptive to that and absorbed it. Right? So there's this idea that the world absorbed um, God's voice. So then, in a sense, you could say that it did go beponemius. It didn't. There was no echo. It was beponemius. However... As we're saying here in the parentheses, but it wasn't in a way that Shamata is is Allah True, it was absorbed, but it wasn't since the, 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 the world itself didn't do anything to get to that stage to receive to, to be able to receive it. So even though there was some level of pneumius that was experienced, that was internalized in, to a degree, but it wasn't the ultimate form of pneumius of internalization because it wasn't done through the Aved Lamata. Let's see what he says in such. The ultimate level of pneumius, the ultimate way to internalize something is only when it comes, when it's earned by the Mata, by, by, by the one below. Therefore, the Medr says that the main time that the Shekhinah, when was it that the Shekhinah was, 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 was invested in this world was when the Mishkan was built. Why? This is interesting. Also, the Medr, even the Medrash that we quoted before from Parshish Nasi, the Medrash Tan Chuma, over there also, it says, when was it that the, that the, God, that the Divine Presence was revealed in this world? It was, it was uh, by, by Mount Torah. It says, Vayeri Dashem al Sinai. Vayeri Dashem al Sinai. God descends on Mount Sinai. That's Mount Torah. That's Mount Sinai. But then it says, Vayeri Masai. When was it? When the Mishkan was, was, so when was it? Was it Mount Sinai or Mishkan? So really, even in that Medrash itself, where it says that the Shekhinah was revealed in this world by Mount Sinai, even there it says, when it was completed, when was the ultimate fulfillment of this concept of the Shekhinah being revealed in this world? That was by, by when the Mishkan was built. Why? 
the divine presence being manifest in this world by Mount Sinai, that was that came from God's initiative, from above. Therefore, as we said before, the, the, the revelation was only temporary. And after, after, Mount, after the revelation of Mount Sinai, God descend, uh, ascends again, and Mount Sinai becomes a regular mountain like all the other ones. But the ultimate, uh, the, 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 the advantage of the revelation of the Shekhinah in the Mishkan was How what, does that come about? The divine presence being manifest in the Mishkan or through the Mishkan, it's through our Avaida, our service. As the verse itself says, You build the Mishkan. The Mishkan was built by man. We were the ones who built it. And we built it from physical materials. Yes. <coughs> well, there's that, that gets, that's, a, that's another topic about when were we instructed to build it. Was it before? Was it after? The ultimate purpose was for there to be one. But even that is the same idea. Even after the Chata Egel, the idea of Truva, the repentance, meaning that the, that the ones below were elevated. They did, they did what they had to do to, to be now worthy and deserving of that revelation. So it comes through the Avaida Samata. So this is one advantage, that the idea that, that the ultimate revelation of, of godliness in this world comes in the Mishkan. Why? Because it's v'asuli mikdash, that we have to make it. It comes through the avayda, the service of the ones below, of this world, and of the people in this world. But then there's another advantage, if It's not just that we, through our service, bring about the revelation of godliness into this world, but the Rebbe says there's another point. The ma'ilas ha'am shacha b'mishkan mikdash. The novelty, the advantage of the, the revelation in the Mishkan, in the, in the, in the, in the Mikdash, in the Temple, al over the one that was experienced at Mount Sinai, it's not only that, that, the, that the revelation at Mount Sinai came from above, it came from God's initiative, and therefore it wasn't the ultimate panemius, it didn't enter into, into uh, this world in an internalized personal fashion, and therefore it was only temporary. Whereas in the Mishkan it was through our service, and therefore the revelation entered within the lower world in a much deeper way. But it's more than that. It's not just that, that it was through our Avaida. That it's not only the fact that it comes through our Avaida, through our service, but it's also the type of service that brings about the revelation in the Mishkan, which is, as we discussed in the, in the Mamarim of Vasilagani at length, this idea of transforming the foolishness of this world into the whole, into divine foolishness, into spiritual foolishness. We talked about the idea, it says about the, the Amaira that, uh, that, would, that would act in a foolish manner, would f- fulfill the mitzvah of, of Simchas Chas and Mekal in a foolish manner, and the sages initially were, for, were, were not pleased with it. Then after he passed away, so it says, Pasak Amud de Nura, he was separated from the rest of the world by a, 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 like a wall of fire. And Rabbi Zayir said, that this, his foolishness was virtuous. That's what separates him from everybody else, is that foolish act. So what the sages initially thought was, was a uh, sort of a uh, um, defiling or, 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 or mistreatment of the high office that this sage held, eventually they came to realize that on the contrary, that this was a very high form of divine service. That was transforming foolishness of this world into foolishness of Kedusha, of holiness. So as we explained that the idea of the Mishkan is, the idea of Karbanis is trans- transforming the animalistic tendencies and bringing them to God. And also, as we discussed even in our Maimur, Basi Lagani from this year, um, the idea, we're, we're discussing this topic of the Atzei Shittim, which Atzei Shittim represents Shtus, foolishness, and we turn that into the walls of the Mishkan. So we see that the Mishkan is not just our service that builds a Mishkan, builds a home for Hashem, but what are the tools, what is the method in which we're building it is by transforming the foolishness of this world into holiness. Why is this an, even greater than just your service on its own? So it's that gam ba'am shacha because even when we're talking about drawing divine energy through our own service, the, 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 the service which comes through breaking the unholy, subduing the unholy, and transforming it, is greater than service just in holy matters. Because as the verse says, in Kaelis, there's, a in a there's a virtue, there's an advantage to light that comes from darkness. When we say that there's an advantage to light over darkness, Darkness, so the simple meaning is that light is better than dark. But the meaning of Yisra no Oymina is that there's a great, there's a sweetness, there's a virtue in light that comes from the darkness. That the light that comes from the darkness is a greater light, is a deeper light. 
that when we transform the darkness into light, there's an advantage in the light itself. Kimavur Baruch Bamaimer is explained at length in the Maimer. So the point is <clears throat> that when we talk about the Shekhinah coming down here, Lamata, into this world, the Shekhinah coming to this world, you have two stages. There's the stage of the Shekhinah coming, which was at Mount Sinai, at Mount Torah, when God reveals himself in this world. The thing, the problem with that is, that's only the beginning. That's not the ultimate Basi Lagani. That's not the ultimate uh, revelation of godliness in this world, because that was, that was from God's initiative. That didn't come from uh, our service. It came from God's initiative, and therefore it wasn't something that truly transformed the individual who experienced it, and the world that experienced it. The ultimate experience of the divine presence resting in this world, coming to this world, comes through Vasil the Mikdash, through building of the Mishkan and the Mikdash, the temple for God. Why? Because when we build the temple for God, that represents, that's symbolic of our service of Hashem. And even when we talk about our service of Hashem, there are two ways you can serve God. You could serve God in spiritual manners. Um, in, in a spiritual way, which is you study Torah, you seclude yourself, you disconnect yourself from this world, and you, you focus only on holy things, and you don't engage in the physical world. And that's a, that's a wonderful service of Hashem, and a person can climb and reach very high levels of uh, divine insight or wisdom or revelation, whatever it is. But there's an even greater form of service of Hashem, which is through engaging the physical world. When we, when we're, when we're trans, when we are, are immersed in the physical world and utilizing it to serve Hashem, that causes a transformation of the physical, of the mundane, into something spiritual. We utilize it to, to become a vehicle and a vessel for spirituality, for godliness. And when we do it in that fashion, so there it's a much deeper revelation of godliness in the world. Because it's not just that there it's, we have it be it's something that becomes eternalized, but the, the light, the revelation of godliness is a deeper revelation since it's the light that comes through the darkness. That will we'll explore this idea a little further in the, in the rest of the, the Mimer. What's the question? Okay. Oh, did you?